Welcome to a basic introduction to mechanical ventilation. This is chapter 3.3. .3. What is capnography? Measuring the CO2 levels in the blood is really the best way to monitor ventilation. You will remember that removing carbon dioxide is the major job of the lungs and there are several factors that contribute to carbon dioxide levels, namely CO2 production from the cells, the amount of dead space in the lungs, both physiological and anatomical, and minute ventilation. But in order to monitor CO2 levels in the blood, you need an arterial blood gas or an arterial line. Fortunately, we have capnography now. This is a non-invasive way to measure carbon dioxide levels in the exhaled breath. It works on the same principles as the oxygen saturation probe, with a light emitter and a detector on the opposite side of it. The difference though is that the light is in the infrared range so when you look at the capnograph you can't actually see the light. Capnography can tell us a lot about the body. It can tell us how effective ventilation is, i.e. how much CO2 the lungs are getting rid of. It can tell us about perfusion insofar as how much carbon dioxide is being transported, and metabolism, how much of the carbon dioxide is being produced. A normal capnograph has four phases. Phase one is at the start of exhalation, when the air going past the detector is from the trachea and the bronchus. This is air from the anatomical dead space. Phase two is the rapid rise as the CO2 from the alveoli starts to enter the breath stream and its concentration increases. Now phase three is a plateau where most of the breath stream contains air just from the alveoli. The end tidal CO2 is at the end of this plateau and is the maximum CO2 concentration in the lungs. Phase four is inspiration, so the CO2 concentration detected falls dramatically since there is actually very little carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. But don't you worry, humans are working very hard to fix that problem. People with normal lungs will have a rectangular shaped capnograph, and the difference between the end tidal CO2 and the pCO2 measured in the blood on a blood gas will only be about 0 to 5 millimeters of mercury. This gap exists because there is physiological dead space even in a normal person. Patients with asthma or COPD will have a long expiratory flow and as a result will have a rounded phase 2 and an upward slope in phase 3. This is because of the increased anatomical dead space and a prolonged time to get air from the alveoli exhaled and past the detector. If there is a large gap between the end tidal CO2 and the pCO2 measured on the arterial blood gas, then that's a clue that there's a lot of physiological dead space in play. While the end tidal CO2 is useful, it is better to follow this trend over time and respond to your therapies to those trends as opposed to responding to a single value in time. 